In this next example, we're asked to use series to evaluate this limit. Now I know what you're thinking. We're back to evaluating limits. As x goes to 0, you notice that the top is 0, the bottom is 0. This is type 0 over 0. So you're probably thinking, why not use L'Hopital? Why not use L'Hopital's rule? Well, we certainly could. Um, but the question is asking us to use series instead. So we're going to use series to evaluate this limit. And we'll make the connection with L'Hopital's rule at the end, so not to worry. Um, I'm not abandoning it entirely, but there, there is a nice, neat connection between L'Hopital's rule and what we're about to do. So the first thing we want to do is use series to represent both the function in the numerator and the function in the denominator. So what is the series representation of the numerator. That's 1 minus the cosine function. Cosine function is the power series where and only the even powers are surviving. So it's 1 minus x squared over 2 factorial plus x to the fourth over 4 factorial minus x to the sixth over 6 factorial plus, and the pattern continues. What about, well, okay, maybe I can simplify this. 1 minus that, the 1's cancel, and I get an x squared over 2 factorial minus x to the 4th over 4 factorial plus x to the 6th over 6 factorial, and then dot, dot, dot. So that's the numerator. And how about the series expansion of the denominator? 1 plus x minus e to the x. So that's 1 plus x minus the exponential. And that is 1 plus x plus x squared over 2 factorial plus x cubed over 3 factorial plus dot dot dot. And we see that the 1's cancel off, the x's cancel off, and what's left is an x squared over 2 factorial, oh, negative because of the negative sign, negative x cubed over 3 factorial minus x to the 4th over 4 factorial minus dot dot dot. So our function that we're interested in finding the limit of is 1 minus cos of x all over 1 plus x minus e to the x. So I'm replacing both of the numerator and denominator with their series expansions. That's x squared over 2 factorial minus x to the 4th over 4 factorial plus x to the 6th over 6 factorial and the bottom is negative x squared over 2 factorial minus x cubed over 3 factorial minus x to the fourth over 4 factorial and so on. Now notice that every term in the top has x squared as a factor and every term in the bottom has x squared as a factor. So I could factor an x squared out of everything in the top, everything in the bottom, and then cancel those common factors. So getting rid of an x squared from everything to the fourth over six factorial minus dot 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 and this is negative one over two factorial minus x cubed uh, sorry minus x over three factorial minus x squared over four factorial minus dot 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 okay so this function has representation given by this and this is when x is not 0, because the original wasn't defined at 0. Uh, but this one, now that I've done the cancellation, is defined at 0. And that's nice. That was the whole reason why I wanted that cancellation, because now I can take the limit as x goes to 0 of 1 minus cos of x all over 1 plus x minus e to the x is equal to the limit as x goes to 0 of this whole expression. 1 over 2 factorial minus x squared over 4 factorial dot 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 and negative 1 over 2 factorial minus x over 3 factorial minus dot dot dot. Why did I put the dot dot dots here so early? Well I noticed that every other term beyond the first one has an x factor in it. And I'm taking the limit as x goes to 0. So regardless of what they are, all of these things are going to 0 anyway because they all have a factor of x in them. And those are all going to 0. So the value of the limit is going to be 1 over 2 factorial over negative 1 over 2 factorial, or in other words, negative 1.
So there's the value of the limit. And we got it by doing series expansions of the numerator and the denominator. Now, if you do the same thing with L'Hopital's rule, you will also get uh, the same limit, negative 1. But think about what happens in L'Hopital's rule. So when, if we were to do L'Hopital's rule, you would say, OK, the limit as x goes to 0 of 1 minus cos of x over 1 plus x minus e to the x. Well, that's of type 0 over 0. So we would do L'Hopital by taking the derivative of the top, putting it over the derivative of the bottom. What's the derivative of the top? That would be sine of x. What's the derivative of the bottom? 1 minus e to the x. Plugging in 0 again, you get 0 over 0 again. So we have to use L'Hopital again. Limit as x goes to 0. Derivative of sine is cosine x. Derivative of the bottom is negative e to the x. Now I can plug 0 in. That's cos of 0 over negative e to the 0. That gives me an answer of negative 1. Same result. But this method using series starts to shed light on why L'Hopital works. How many applications of L'Hopital's rule did we used, use? Well, we used one there and one there. So what's sitting in the last result is really something to do with the second derivative of the numerator and something to do with the second derivative of the denominator. That's what we get when we do L'Hopital twice. We're doing things involving the second derivative at this point of the numerator and denominator. Let's think back to our series expansions. What has survived in our series expansion? Well, the numbers here, negative 1, 1 over 2 factorial, negative 1 over 2 factorial, those numerators there in those expansions. This was the coefficient of x squared. So the Taylor series expansion is the second derivative over 2 factorial. So the numbers we're staring at here, the 1 and negative 1, are really the second derivatives. They are exactly the numbers that came out here and here when we plug 0 in. So the fact that when we did the expansions here, we got some cancellations off. We got a couple here. The terms that survived, these ones, the ones that the only ones that matter were really just related to the second derivatives of the original functions. And that's really what's being used in both cases, the second derivative. L'Hopital may have seemed like a bit of a mystery. Why should the limit of the ratio be equal to the limit of the ratio of the derivatives? Here, there's no mystery why. Because this function, it starts with this term, x squared minus 2 x squared over 2 factorial. That's the first term. And then the rest are higher powers of x. The bottom one starts with that term. Why does it start with these terms? That was Taylor's series. These are related, the coefficients are related to the second derivative. So there's no surprise why the second derivative comes up in evaluating the limit. And that's the connection with L'Hopital's rule.